In 2016, Death Battle featured Bayonetta vs. Dante, with the Umbro Witch being taken down by the Devil Hunter. It's been seven years since this loss, and I think our girl needs a rematch. But instead of using lore accurate feats, we'll instead be using the equalizing power of dice rolls and the D&D 5th edition as a system. I'm also going to take things to the next level by using a homebrew subclass that I designed for both Bayonetta and Dante. Hello and thank you for being here, and welcome to My Wife Is, VMC. I'm DMV and you're watching Husbando Homebrew, a show where we take pop culture to pen and paper. For today's versus battle, we'll have both combatants be at level 10. The reigning champion Dante will be using the stylish ranker fighter subclass, which has already been updated in our Kofi shop. Our Umbro Witch Challenger, on the other hand, will be using this channel's first ever Warlock subclass, The Mistress. So, is everybody comfy at the table? Make sure you kiss that like button, Norway, and let's get this party started. This fight is brought to you by these magnificent mallards over at our Ko-Fi. Extra huge thanks to our top supporters, Birkinator, Grim, Sasquatch, CT Cox, and the absolute mad lad that is Cosplay Battle. Thank you, thank you so much. Rolling initiative, Bayonetta rolls. A natural one. Meanwhile, Dante rolls a 14 for a total of 16. Heaven or hell. Let's rock. With Ebony and Ivory in hand, Dante immediately opens fire at the Umbro Witch, rolling a natural 19 for a total of 28, and a natural 16 for a total of 25. Bayo will attempt to use Witch Time against that second attack, rolling a D8 to her AC of 18 for 22, which unfortunately still hits, for a total of 8 and 11 piercing damage. Not having the best start, Bayo will try to gain the upper hand by casting a Crippling Hold monster spell with a DC of 17. A dome of time dilating magic surrounds a Devil Hunter as he rolls a whiz save for 19 and the spell breaks from his demonic power. Assessing her options, Bayo transforms, bursting out of her weave in a panther-like form by using Wild Thing as a bonus action. Dashing off to gain some distance and running along the sides of the building thanks to her Witch Walk. Dante is feeling confident but not complacent as he releases his demonic energy and uses Devil Trigger. With his newfound fly speed, he dashes straight to Bayo's hidey hole and uses Action Surge to rain bullets upon the witch. He rolls a 25 for that first attack, which cuts through the three quarters cover granted by the building. Bayo is determined to avoid any further damage and uses Witch Time, adding a 5 to her covered AC of 23 for a total of 28. The bullets whiz past her as time slows down and uses that same amount of time dilation to dodge the next attack roll of 16. Just before Dante ends his turn, he braces for damage and switches to his royal guard style. Bayo drops the panther form and runs along the side of the building to gain more distance. She turns on her heels then cracks open a tear into the demonic realm as a swirling mass of hair exits the portal and forms into a massive avian monster. Her demon Malphus doesn't waste any time with an initiative roll of 24 and immediately flies down to deliver a talent strike upon Dante for 17, which would have hit for 16 bludgeoning damage, but Dante uses his royal guard reaction to reduce that damage by 3 for a total of 13. Featherface flocks off for another upward slam with a 26, dealing a reduced 7 points of bludgeoning damage. Dante's Devil Trigger regeneration kicks in, healing some of the wounds as he switches back to Gunsling and fires point blank at Malthus. Using his twosome time style move, he also rains down lead upon Bayo using the same attack roll of 23 even with disadvantage. He hits Malthus, dealing 8 magical piercing damage that the reskinned air elemental couldn't mitigate and another 4 radiant damage thanks to his Devil Trigger. Meanwhile, Bayo manages to use her Witch Time once again to avoid potential damage. Using his Quick Switch ability, Dante takes out his Rebellion and uses his Sword Master style. Using his second attack, he delivers two more strikes thanks to his Aerial Rave style move. The first strike hits Malphus with a 17 and another Slash with a 22. He deals a total of 31 points of Slashing and Radiant damage, cutting Malphus' HP down to half in a single turn. With which time granting Bayo advantage, she leaps off from one building to the next, but not without peppering the Devil Hunter with her own set of pistols, the Scarborough Fair. She hits him with an advantaged attack of 23 and deals 11 piercing damage. Thanks to her heel holsters, she does not let up with a gunfire and attacks one more time, but misses. Undeterred and still in midair, Bayo takes out this golden angelic longsword she lovingly calls her tool of torture as she passes Dante making a quick swipe. 
Thanks to her bullet arts, the attack gains a 1d4 bonus for a total of 24, hitting the man for 6 slashing, 3 radiant from the weapon's effect, and 1 from bullet arts for a total of 10 damage. As she lands on the other building, she quickly uses her wicked weave with a bonus action, as another portal opens up revealing a massive fist that slams Dante straight into the building, hitting him with a 26 for a total of 6 force damage. Malthus quickly follows up, burying the Devil Hunter deeper into the building with both attacks hitting him with a 23 and a 22, for a total of 31 points of damage. Dante regenerates as much as he can, as he charges up the Rebellion with a staggering smite. Taking the risk, he lunges forward with a Stinger-style move. Malthus misses him with a 13 on the opportunity attack. Bayo, in vain, attempts Witch Time, but Dante's momentum is too fast and hits her with a 24, but misses the second attack with a 13. That single hit, however deliver the power of a stinger and staggering smite. He deals 14 from the Rebellion, 4 from the Devil Trigger, 8 from the Stinger, and 9 from the Staggering Smite for a total of 35 points of damage. Bea saves against the spell's extra effects with an 18 on the Wiz save, but her concentration to maintain Malthus has a DC of 17. Thanks to her Eldritch Mind Invocation, she barely maintains concentration with an 18. As Bayo shakes off the dust, she engulfs herself in a weave. Bursting from a cocoon of dark hair comes a brightly colored butterfly demon, a beautiful visage of the mistress as she dons her woven masquerade and gains 10 THP along with several other advantages. With all four guns in hand and foot, she fills the air with magical red, but Dante's learned a thing or two from his brother as he deflects each bullet with rapid swing missing him with a 13. Wounded as she may be, she still takes matters into her own hands and she flies up close with her angelic sword. With a coordinated strike with her patron, she hits Dante with a 30. He deals a total of 22 points of damage from a combination of the weapon, bullet arts, and woven masquerade. While this should have taken Dante down, the 22 is reduced to a 19 thanks to his timely use of royal guard. Bayo sees the opportunity and commands her feathered friend to finish the job. The avian demon delivers the decisive blow with a 21 to hit and reducing what little remained of Dante's HP to zero. The devil hunter falls and as if to add insult to injury, the rebellion lands square on his chest blade first. But before Bayo could breathe a sigh of relief, the sword begins to pulse it. The eye sockets from the skull-like guard emits a red light as a massive surge of energy bursts from Dante's formerly unconscious form. The sword's resuscitate ability has kicked in. Dante stands up with guns in hand once more and buffs his initial recovery with his second wind, giving him a total of 33 hit points to spare. He uses the remainder of his movement to go right underneath the Papillon Witch and switches to his gunslinger style to release a massive charged shot that rips right through her woven form with a natural 20. Bayo is reduced to a single hit point and had to use Witch Time to avoid the rest of Dante's attacks. While she passed her save to maintain Malthus, his renewed vigor is worrisome. Nevertheless, she's determined to end this now. She flies down and rains hell on Dante, hitting him with an advantage 25 hit. The damage is significant, with his 33 immediately halved to 17. She continues the Iron Rain, but the man remains standing with only 3 hit points left. If Bayo doesn't take him down now, there's a chance Malthus might miss both attacks on its turn. An AC of 16 isn't exactly easy to hit for the big bird, and if Dante gets another turn, it'll be curtains for her. Still, she has one last attack, and she uses her bonus action to conjure her wicked weed. She rolls. A natural 20! As a massive swirl of dark hair manifests into a healed foot that steps on the Devil Hunter and finally, finally takes him down for good.
Bayonetta's biggest help that got her the win was definitely her feather face summon, Malthus, which is just a reskin to our elemental from the PHB's Minions of Chaos invocation. Now, you might think that the fight was an unfair 2v1, but consider, a Warlock's D8 hit die is paper thin against a fighter's full salvo of attacks. That and Dante's stack of damage riders from his style moves and magic item effects. In fact, Dante's Rebellion is a legendary weapon, so I think adding an air elemental there was just enough to even the odds. And to even drive the point home, the death battle folks also had Bayo summon Madama Butterfly, so summoning Malphus in this fight wasn't too far of a stretch. Hey DMV from the future here, you can find the subclasses for both the Warlock and the Fighter used by Bayo and Dante in the Ko-Fi links down below or in our Ko-Fi shop. Thank you, bye bye Now Dante may have lost this fight, but there is one character he can tag in to help in round 3. His motivated, power-hungry brother, Virgil. And of course, we made a homebrew character out of him, which you can check out here. Until then, my wife and I hope you have a great day ahead.